So in a previous video, we talked about the three things we really like. I think there was actually four things we really like about the Campanaw um, and a few of the little pet peeves or annoyances that we've discovered. So what we thought we'd do in this one is share some of the changes that we've made to the Campanaw. So we'll show you first a few of the alterations that we've made. And then we're also going to talk about some of the changes that we're considering making. And so we're really curious um, and hopeful for some feedback about some of the changes that we're considering making. Um, we've mentioned several times this is our first time owning a trailer. Um, so, you know, we know how much we don't know about owning a trailer. Uh, so we're, we're totally open to any um, feedback, um, experiences you've had with some of the things that we're considering doing. Okay, so first change that we've made is back here in the pantry. And this is one uh, location where it's obvious why we needed to make the change. <laughs> so the light up Turn there. The light on. I can barely reach it. There's no way Gina could reach it. So we put a, a switch here. It's easier to reach for mm -hmm. her. How did you wire the switch? You're just that good. I'm just that good. Okay, so yep, he, put a, he put a switch there for me. So that makes it a lot easier. Um, our Campanile also came with a butane stove. Um, I think since we've bought it, they've changed. I think they're coming maybe with a Camp Chef stove now. Yeah, I don't remember what brand. A little they were bit bigger, about. but a bigger one. We found that the little butane one was really too small for our purposes. It fit really nice in the pantry. Yep. Um, but you know, we have several Coleman stoves, and so that's what we use is the Coleman stove. Butane just didn't have the oomph to heat up water. Yeah, especially in the morning when I'm waiting for my coffee. Coffee. And it's cold though. Yeah. So we're still trying to really figure out how to use the pantry area effectively for our purposes. Um, we're, we do a lot of rearranging and organizing, trying to get things, you know, to work the way we want them to work. What we do right now, we've got a couple baskets where we store odds and ends, some of the kitchen stuff, you know, little loose stuff that we don't want rattling around. Um, the top area up there we use for our um, pudgy pie irons and then things like um, a drill. We use a drill to put the jacks up and down the stabilizing jacks up and down um, we have an ex <laughs> we have an extension cord up there so that if we are somewhere with shore power we have that to plug in we have a, a light up there a battery operated light so if we are in a situation where we need light we have that um, so just our levelers we carry down here um, our little ignic propane tank um, we carry down here as well. Um, so I think that's it back here, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so on the inside, we haven't really done much yet. Um, it comes with a Yeti cooler. We took the Yeti cooler out. We prefer to travel with the cooler in the truck because we're out exploring a lot of times during the day. Yeah, it's with us then. And yeah, you know, we've just always got it with us. Um, and we actually went for longer trips. We have a bigger Yeti. One of the things we are considering is getting a fridge. Um, so if anybody has suggestions or experience with um, the fridges, we would definitely carry it in the truck as opposed to in the trailer. Yeah. Um, Anybody saying, we're thinking about an ice co, right? That, yeah, I think ice co is the one that we're we're thinking about. We're so, kind of leaning towards. Yeah, give us some feedback, good or bad, if, if you have one. Mm -hmm. And um, so to go along with that, we're also considering several options. Uh, you know, uh, solar. We have the rack on the trailer, um, so we could definitely put solar panels up there. We also have the rack on the truck because we, you know, our previous accommodations were a rooftop tent. But now that we have the trailer, we have the rack. <laughs> we have nothing on the rack as of right now. 
Um, so we've talked about solar and or, and or some sort of battery mm -hmm. system. Oh, yeah, ba you got to have a battery bank with solar. Yeah, but we could do just like dual batteries without solar, right? Well, on the, on the trailer, it ain't going to do you any good because no. you have to have some way to charge it. Yeah, but on the and, truck. And the, and the truck, yeah, the, the truck itself can charge it while you're driving. To run the refrigerator. Right. So, yeah, if anybody has experience with, like, dual batteries with a refrigerator, solar with a refrigerator. A lot of people just run, I mean, not a lot of people, but quite a few I've seen run their fridge off of their... Power station? The, yeah, the power box. And we have an anchor. Uh, but we just don't know how long that would... I mean, I guess in the truck... Because it, it can yeah, be charging. it can be charging while it's... More driving. So I think for us, power is the biggest mystery. <laughs> a, a battery and solar on the trailer. To run the trailer. To run the trailer. I mean, that, and that would be to like winter to run electric blanket or the heater, whatever, mm -hmm. is about all that it would be used for on, on the trailer mostly. So that is another upgrade that we're considering is some sort of heat, whether it's a diesel heater we've talked about yeah. or some kind of electric heat after we have a power, a more robust power solution. Yeah, right now we've got a, a 500 watt heater that you plug into an outlet, mm -hmm. but you have to have shore power to do that. Right. Or, I mean, we've got a little generator, but, you know, if you're in some place where you got other people around that's an right. annoyance yeah and, them and us yeah so so those are all things we're considering so inside all we've put up some hooks um, we found baskets that fit perfectly in the cubbies um, too deep in the cubby so there's two baskets so um, above the uh, cassette toilet there, Tim has his two baskets. I have my two baskets. And then up in the top, we have baskets with odds and ends in it as well. Um, and then in the big cabinet where the Zero Breeze is, which does have its own rechargeable battery, we use that top area there for towels, for like bigger sweaters, um, things like that. And then we've just got a couple baskets under the seat um, that we have uh, propane. We have we have a little buddy heater in there. We have some rechargeable fans, um, toilet paper, of course, for the cassette toilet um, and shoes and stuff. And then that bottom door is where the extra water jugs get stored down there. So a couple more changes we've made. We uh. I like to be able to see when I get out of the trailer at night. So we've got, I put a porch light in, motion sensor, so, or it, on. I, that's what I can say. It can either be on or it can, or be, it can on be motion or sensor. On motion sensor. And we keep the yellow lens yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that has been nice, like having that. Okay, next. I uh, put on fully enclosed lug nuts instead of just the standard acorn because like we've said before we like going off-road dirt road all year round so salt on the ends of those lug studs or mud build up on it It'd be a pain in the rear to uh back the lug nuts off you got to change it mm -hmm. so so a little fully enclosed lug nuts and a little bit of anti-seize to um we're considering adding a handle um, Tim talked with Sean at Campanaw about adding a handle. They are offering that, I believe now you can get that as an option. Um, we have kind of a retro handle from a school <laughs> that we're considering adding here. And so Tim talked to Sean about the best way to do that and how to make sure it was secure and everything. Um, and of course the step because I'm super short. One of the other things we're talking about doing is adding two more stabilizers up front just for more stability. And I mean, it hasn't really been an issue, no. but there have been some places that we've been that have been pretty unlevel. Yeah. And you would feel 
like it would be less uh yeah more stable yeah with those so not something that we like really feel like it needs we just feel like it would be an added right <laughs> added bonus especially if you get the tongue right. sticking farther out with the with a battery bank on the front and everything so that's another change so like we said we're we're considering solar so we have the um 270 awning in the rack we're considering solar um and what we think we would like to do um we have the receiver here is get a um like a tray that could hold a box mm -hmm. or a box a cargo tray Some cargo, cargo tray box and a box and have the batteries in the box. You know, we know we would need ventilation and everything. So we are aware of that at least. Yeah, uh, give us more storage for in, in out of the pantry, mm -hmm. put the leveling stuff in the storage box in the front. Right, and then the pantry we could dedicate solely to mm -hmm. cooking and food stuff. Um, and then the hitch. Yes. Um, seen a lot of uh, off-road trailers with the uh, articulating I believe it's called hitch which kind of works like a universal joint on a drive shaft where it can go side to side and more so than just on the ball I've looked into that uh, several of those were still contemplating which one would be best but, yeah, uh, so if anybody has experience yeah. with articulating hitches ones you like and ones you don't like ones you've yeah. had a good experience with and maybe some that have not been not so great of an experience we would love to hear about it definitely um so i think is that it well the 270 awning you mentioned it yeah so the 270 awning with sides okay. and because we do winter camp that has been i don't want to oh. say a lifesaver no. But it has it definitely is. made a difference in an absolutely miserable camping experience and yeah. one that was at least tolerable. Yeah, uh, we did one other change we are considering is we have a portable shower, but we don't have a shower enclosure. We do have a shower. Enclosure. We have a pop-up. Oh, so the camp and all actually came. Yes with a extra large um like privacy tent so it's got two rooms it's got like the area for the shower and then it's got like the dressing area the, we've used it for our cassette toilet yeah, that's what it came with yeah so to put the cassette toilet outside of the camper um when the 270 awning is open it comes all picture, the way uh, picture of that. yeah so it comes like all the way out to here and so there's like this opening right here about 30 inch 36 inch uh, opening yeah so we would love to see and it comes back to um, almost to the um, beam yeah the rail up there um, not quite maybe halfway oh back of the trailer I mean, yeah it's about so we would love to find and we're having a hard time doing it we would love to find a shower enclosure that we could attach you know to the rail up here somehow with a doorway facing <laughs> that's what we're having trouble we can find a ton of shower enclosures um, but we can't find any that that have the door on the side yeah so then we could come out of the camper under the awning into the shower enclosure area here. These are the vents for the air, um, so for the zero breeze, you know, so we are aware that those are there, our um, shore power here. The shower tents all have a wall. Yeah. I mean, that would okay. just, we would have to be aware of that, you know. And, and, and the vent is only used. When it's it running. It discharges warm air. Right. I mean, it's not like it's a, a furnace vent. Yeah. So, we, you know, we're not super worried about that. Um, but we think that that would be, like, awesome. <laughs> we yeah. would have... It, it, it would completely enclose it. I mean, as it yeah. is, you've got that, basically, a doorway. Here. There. And wind comes in through there, too. So it would, um, like, close off that part of the um, awning and sidewalls. And we would have a privacy tent here. We could have the cassette toilet out here. We could yeah, use it for showers. showers. We could, yeah. Um, so, but again, and we know there are a ton of them out there, 
but we are having a really hard time finding any of them that have an opening on this side. We found them with openings on that side. No, on the front. Well, on the straight, front? Straight towards you. Or on that front corner. Yeah, where the corner mm -hmm. kind of opened. Yeah, but we haven't found anything that opens on this side. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking for. And I think we could do it. I think we could make it ourselves. Um, Modi put just modify, modify one. one, just put a zipper in there, I think would be possible. But if anybody knows of one that has an opening on that side, yeah, let us know. I'd hate, I'd hate to buy one, find out that we couldn't do it, uh -huh. and have just butchered up a, <laughs> yeah. a good <laughs> shower. Mountain shower. Uh, some of them are pretty pricey. Okay, so I think that's it. Let us know what you think about the changes that we've made so far. Um, and any suggestions you have, especially other Campanaw owners, if there's things you've changed or adapted, um, let us know. We would love to hear oh, about it. Don't forget the tire cover, too. Oh, custom tire cover? Yeah. We're, we're thinking about a custom tire cover that says Adventures with Heckenback on it. <laughs> okay. Hope to hear from you. Please leave some comments below. Let us know what you're doing.